Hey, well, welcome to the Dream Labs. Uh, Dr. Contrast here. Hope everything is fine. And uh, hey, Brett, how are you? Good to have you on board. And yeah, you're the first one in. So good job there, doctor. Good to have you on board. And uh, we're going to go through some things today. I think it might be some interest to you. Um, I just thought, uh, for example, the purpose of today's stream is to really get into something that I think uh, might be of some interest to individuals out there, uh, including yourself, Brett. Um, it has a lot to do with the drawing skill and so forth, a lot of the uh, consulting work that I've done. And I thought it might be just kind of nice to, to change a little bit of the chapter here today to kind of go back a little bit and show you some of the professional work I've done uh, over the course of the past year or two. And uh, just to kind of reinforce the fact that it's more than just product design, car design, and uh, the, the, those kind of things we were discussing on the stream here. So what I thought I'd do is just kind of pull back a little bit, not just so much drawing today, but just kind of walk you through some things on what uh, takes place uh, getting into, uh, for example, um, what I consider to be a very interesting science, and that would be landscape architecture. And what's interesting about it is that it involves an awful lot of uh, neat things in terms of architectural things. You'll see some architecture, you'll see some landscape work, you'll see some thumbnail studies. The majority of it is, uh, it's not a reflection so much, uh, Brad, it's just an overview of what I want to do here is, um, or observations, that's a good word, way to put it at it. What I'm looking at here now, we've done a lot of in the past few streams, Brad, we've been doing product work and architect and, and uh, uh, automotive materials and so forth. But I want to spread the, um, the, the will out there a little bit. Um, uh, no, I mean, reflect, uh, not, uh, uh, reflecting on old work and some of it's recent as well, yes. Not reflecting so much, but trying to project to the audience out there that uh, I want to be a service agent for not only just product design, uh, human figure work, uh, like you're going through, Brad, and uh, transportation design, but there's a whole skill set out there that uh, it gets into architecture, landscape architecture. So I thought I'd just kind of pull back the curtain today and just kind of walk you through some professional work I've done with clients over the course of time here to kind of let you see where the range of skills are so that when you tune in, for example, if you have an interest, we can put, uh, put together a program or two um, in the future references for streaming here. And I think that's what I'd like to be able to do, introduce what I've done here today, uh, have you look at it as a bit of a different dimension from what we have been doing. And then maybe next week sometime, put together a nice simple program on, hey, here's how we develop a, a site plan. Here's how we look at uh, architectural from a, a landscape uh, perspective. So let me just begin here, not to bore you to death. If you have any questions, Brad, feel free to fire away here. Uh, this first sketch is just a real fast um, uh, pencil uh, pencil sketch, a ballpoint pen sketch, rather, of a, a public gathering place at the Shaw Development over in New Albany, Ohio. Um, it's a, it, this is a condensed uh, study. It's a very large sketch, done an 18 by 24 size. Um, um, and, and, it, and, and once we submit with the client, the client, come, uh, the client will come to us who are developing the, the piece and saying, hey, how are you? And uh, what are we doing here to take a look at, uh, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, now look at, uh, we've got an assignment we needed to put together housing development. We're going to have these features in it, and we want to include the following development uh, items. I'll go through and go back in the office and start cranking out some concept sketches based on the input from the client itself. So one of the things I want to stress today in this stream is more of an interface between the client and the and the actual firms that we're working with, how it all begins to unfold. So they'll give us an assignment, we'll come back and do this, generate hundreds of sketches, of which this is one of many, and begin to go back and make presentations to them. So there's the first one from Shod. Then we go back into some things here we've done. Let me move this up just a little bit. These are some landscape uh, fine-tuned pieces, for example, for the villas at Highland Lakes in, uh, in Delaware, Ohio. Uh, this was down below. This is a marker pastel and uh, some ballpoint pen work as well. This was done for the the, the commons in, uh, in Grove City, Ohio. A little corner detail for the housing uh, uh, development and so forth that they're putting together down there. And again, I work with a, a firm here in town, uh, a lot of architectural firms in town, and landscape design firms doing the work for them and uh, illustrating some of their thoughts. So, And then this up on top here is an interesting series of sketches. Let me move this on a little bit here. This upper piece was a development study for the city of, uh, of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, get into some very uh, uh, new system of entry egress into the city itself, um, and going back into some tower graphics like an office complex. And this was the uh, assignment study that we were assigned to do for a copy serve here in Dublin, Ohio. Uh, this is their main, their, their office facilities in Dublin. And we were contracted to do a lot of their signage work here. This, this is a ballpoint pen sketch of uh, Mercy Hospital in Dublin, Ohio, just a line study working with their client base to get uh, all the prints and elevations and things from their architectural firm and then working with the architectural firm to develop the sketches. And this is the final little color study based off of that. So let me just kind of move the pad around here, bear with me. I'll just kind of move back and forth here. Here's an interesting set of uh, sketches here. These are little development sketches. We go through with a client, for example, this is for the city of Westerville. Uh, to put together a series of sketches on a piece of land they had, the black outline is where the property was, 
And we came back in and they asked us, for example, to begin to conceptualize what an athletic complex might look like on these, uh, these sites. So and notice there's a little plan view study here. And then we put it in a little bit of a, of a perspective study. And notice how some of the contour lines are working through this, the actual shape itself. We went through that uh, yesterday in some of the stream work on doing contours and surface work. This is where it begins to come in handy as well and, uh, and doing some landscape work. And then the, the sketch down below, same basic theme, only adding a little bit of a water feature. Here it is, there's the plan view sketch, same site plan again. Here are all the athletic fields like soccer, baseball, and some, uh, some facilities and the like. Then we come back in and begin to put that into perspective. Um, and this is what that might look like um, at the little clubhouse area here and some of the water development. And again, notice how the contour lines begin to help to describe what we're trying to tell the client as we go through it. Uh, here's another set of them here. Uh, going back in, another page. This is more of an architectural complex where they want to add some buildings like locker facilities and the like and, um, and guest facilities on the site itself. Again, the, the, the actual outline of the property and um, a, a little plan view sketch of what it might look like. And again, so the real quick little thumbnail sketch, sketches in perspective as to what they might look like when it all comes to life. Last but not least, the last little study here is the same kind of situation again, where we change the orientation of the fields themselves off of this again, this plan view study uh, done for the client. Um, and by <clears throat> what I'm at here, each one of these sketches you see, a uh, lots are done. For example, this is but a small sample of uh, some of the work we do uh, with clients and so forth and getting feedback from them. So we'll take the sketches in, review them, come back and refine them. So there's a lot of interface going back and forth between what we do here. So there we are, we're gonna go back and let's try to turn a new leaf here. This is some interesting things here. This is our group um, down, down in South Carolina, for example, this first set here is a water park. It's in a pavilion area in the South Carolina, uh, I think uh, near, was it the Winston-Salem? And uh, they came to us and said, well, you know, we have a little boating facility. We've got a little bit of an amphitheater, uh, some water, and, a, and a, a, a gathering place here. Here's a little overlook study uh, on the same site, for example. Uh, put together a little overlook with a walking path going into this little overlook back again to the, into the actual park itself. So again, <clears throat> pardon me, this is an awful lot of working back and forth with clients and putting together uh, techniques and systems to kind of work with them to, to establish the goal and to, to finalize the entire process. Um, interesting too, um, that most of these studies you'll see are, are all freehand, uh, ballpoint pen, a little bit of marker, a little bit of pencil, and and uh, and so on. So there's a lot of a lot of media interchanging here as we as we go. Here's a little bridge study, for example, over here. Uh, we'll bring this down on scale. A little walking bridge area in the same park uh, for this uh, group, this architectural firm. And again, down below, a little seating area, like a rest area, for example, a bench detail. They wanted something very rustic and uh, some stonework and some signage here, for example, on, uh, on wayfinding and path work and so forth. So let's kind of move along here. Um, again, another series of sketches here for, let's go to this upper one. This is for a wetland study uh, in West Virginia. Um, there's a certain uh, wetlands they're trying to preserve. They want to do a little boardwalk area, an observation area, and come back in again. Uh, this is done again for the, the, the client's benefit. Again, working with them, getting feedback about what they wanted, uh, how they wanted to pursue it, and uh, begin to put the pieces together for them. A little sketch down below was in the same water, in the same uh, wetlands area, but this is part of the subdivision around it. They want to preserve a little stream coming through it and build some housing development behind that as we went through it. Um, the next family of sketches here, uh, we're done. Let's move this down just a bit here. This was all done for the next few sketches here. We're done for Anderson's out of Indiana. <clears throat> for example, uh, they wanted a new, uh, like a new uh, produce shelter they want to put on their site, for example. So they came to us and looked at um, the, the, the site plan, the drawings, and so forth, and went back in and started generating some sketches. These are all uh, freehand ballpoint sketches of what these little, this little farm shelter might look like. There's one study, and down below, a little bit more of a formal farm type of an elevation um, study here. Um, I read, so no offense, Doc, but in these drawings, what's the point of using colors if it's only meant for a given specific review? For options on how the building will be wood, or a sketch, and more than enough for it. No, not really, um, Brad, it's a good question. What you want to do is go through a whole series of, like for example, working with a client, as you all know. Um, <clears throat> It's always really healthy to start with a series of little non-color sketches, uh, just um, just going through some theme sketches, getting a character down and putting together a mood or an idea. And then you go from the, that, for example, in this case, these line studies move into full-size renderings and, and other areas that you're into full color. So it's part of the whole process of going and working with a, with a corporation. I hope that, does that answer your question, Brett, hopefully?
Uh, yeah, I think that uh, now you're the, the part of your last part of your question for Gary Klein to the idea for this option presented. And, and, okay, don't understand. It's a it's a process of conversation for you meet with a client. They tell you what the what the vision is. They give you the drawings or the insight and so forth. And instead of going to full color, what they always suggest, for example, is let's do some thumbnail studies or a quick little ballpoint pen sketches or pencil sketches to get a flavor down or a concept. And let's develop that and go back and forth with changes and, and adjustments, then move into some other preliminary color work and then make the final presentation and rendering. So there's a real process behind it all, Brad. Uh, you don't want to go into a situation at any given time with just non-color. Uh, to me, that's uh, that's a real, um, that's a misnomer. You just don't want to get into that situation. So I think that's a good question you have there. Um, some sketches like this might be ample enough, but they want to see what it might look like with their corporate colors, their logo, et cetera, and all the pieces they're putting together to, to market this thing for, for manufacturing. So that's, again, this is Anderson's. Let me turn the corner here. <clears throat> same situation again. Another variation on theme in the same farm area with a, with a transparent canopy, a little wall structure, and a little bit more of a detail down below. Let's go to this guy right here. Uh, down below, again, a little bit more of a perspective elevation, again, with the signage out here, the actual farm uh, lean-to uh, going next to it. And then, yeah, very good. I hope that helps. I like the top-down yeah, perspective. It's very interesting. So that's what we're looking for here in terms of the overhead um, 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 character of the building itself, what the client expects out of it. And then from these studies, uh, Brad, what we did was go down and really begin to take a look at some of the best of the best and put together a whole series of color illustrations that then they could take to their marketing department and do a great job of selling it here. Let's turn a page here for a minute here and go that way. This is a little plan view study here, uh, full color for a, a church that was located here in, uh, um, in Pavilion in Grace Brethren and, uh, and um, I think it was Worthington. Uh, they had a site plan with a little bit of lake. They wanted a little overlook area and a pavilion area built. And there's a little photo references of what we're after. So again, uh, this was done. Um, they gave us the site plan. We kind of reduced it down. This whole series of thumbnail sketches and perspective studies. Then they picked the best of the best and put this into an actual working drawing. So they put all the contour work on it and some of the notation. And they could take that to their, their um, board of directors and go from there. Really interesting. So... Interesting display. So that's what that happened. That's what uh, that little plan view study is all about. Let me turn the page here. This is a lot of fun here. This is where we get into a lot of this maybe validates what your question might be too, Brett. Um, we work with the city of Bowling Green uh, to do an awful lot of wayfinding or signage sketches. And again, here's a good illustration of what you were referring to in your earlier question, Brett. That these sketches are done very quickly with just real quick pencil sketches looking for themes and variations. If we take these sketches, let me just kind of walk through these here. There's the first one. There's a second set here with signage or wayfinding in it. Just a whole series of little thumbnail sketches. And we'll switch and go over to this side here, let you see what this looked like. Again, some variations on themes, how to wayfind uh, where the downtown area is, where the campus is, certain certain symbols, for example, that you can utilize in the actual city itself. And then down below, this little plan view section or an elevation of what it might look like in plan view. What am I look like in plan view, et cetera, and then a little, a little um, uh, elevation study. So all these sketches were really paramount in working with the client to get them to understand what their vision was. And from there, we went into full color stuff. So let me move along here. Here's, again, going from that series of just little thumbnail sketches, then they came to us and said, well, we need a real gateway as you come up the expressway. We want to see something very prominent in the highway that people can see from the great distance. These sketches are all about um, a, a wayfinding piece of what is known as a gateway, an introduction to a city. Uh, these sketches, again, some plan view work, some, some uh, elevations, back to plan view again, looking at softscape and hardscape in, in information. Coming down the line here with this little perspective study and what that might look like. Oh, let me move that over just a bit. What it might look like in plan view and coming into a little perspective study about what that might look like as you come up there off the expressway to see the city of Bowling Green, notice historic. That comes from them. They give us information about what we're looking at to deal with and over here. Another set of little sketches down below here. Same same principle, looking for a real good wayfinding benchmark statement for the city of Bowling Green. Um, and then again, plan view, and again, plan view, and then a little, a little thumbnail sketches. Up on top again, there's a real active set of sketches here. We actually do an elevation, back to plan view, back to elevation, what it might look like with hardscape systems in place and just little variations on theme that really help our clients see how we're thinking and to sell the idea that they're looking for. Let's move along here. Um, a little contour study here. We're in amphitheater for that same uh, Grace Brethren Church here. 
a little pavilion there, a little elevation study of what it is like, and then again, a little water feature, and then again, a, a little wraparound elevation for amphitheater, fan view study again, and then a little perspective sketch down here to let you see what that might look like in another variation. So um, this is all part of the whole process, like an overlook on the lake, Again, a plan view look at what this might look like. Uh, very interesting set of sketches. And we really think it's great to work with clients, whether it's uh, landscape architecture or product design or automobile work. It's the same process all the way through it. It, it, just doesn't, it doesn't change. You really have to tell your story. And the best way to tell your story is number one, listen to your client, listen to what the objective is, and then deliver the first phase of sketches based on their input. Then we go back and forth about likes and dislikes. It really makes a huge difference. So. Uh, let me stop right there for a moment, uh, Brad. Is this making sense for you so far? I mean, I mean, I want us to really tell a story. Because I'm beginning to move into some things maybe next week about doing some landscape sketch rendering work so you can see how it all begins to function. Let me turn around here. And there's a little, uh, this is an interesting program for West Virginia uh, University. Is there any math that you're doing these sketches? Um, no, there isn't any mathematical measurement at all, uh, Brad. What I'm doing is looking at um, the only measurement we have is maybe an architectural drawing or, or a study from them that gives us a sense of scale, um, position, and so forth. And then we work from there and begin to put this into context. So there's really no math to it. It's a matter of just visualizing what the vision is from their drawings and their architectural studies and converting that into illustrations for sales and purposes. Hey, Chip, how are you? Good to have you on board here. Um, let me tell you why that's really interesting. There's a lot you'll find too as you go through the, the process of working with uh, a lot of clients. They will not, most architectural firms do not do a lot of sketches. They'll do a lot of plan view work, a lot of elevation work, um, and so forth, and section work, um, as, well as, uh, as well as also landscape architectural firms. But they don't have that visualization process. That's why our skill is necessary for them to sell their work. They'll work in an elevation, for example, like this, or, or they'll give us a drawing of what this, this boulevard would look like. They have an idea what the overpass of the bridge might look like, but they can't illustrate it. So that's our task to come in and work with them to make sure here's a garden to sale where the, where the, where the, where the uh, overlook is and where the walkway is. Here's the hotel it enters, and here's the actual entryway. Here are the steps that go to it. Here's a little view again from, look from another perspective. They need our skills to sell those, uh, those elements. That's why it's so critical to work in full dimension of a lot of sketchability and a lot of range in what you do. It's not just cars, not just product, but it's architecture, landscape architecture, interior space. Uh, it keeps you very active and it's great to work with an awful lot. Uh, yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. You got it, uh, Brett, that's it. It's all part of that process. So that's why we go a lot of that. That's why a lot of sketches you see here are very loose and formatted before we get into final work. And here's a, another good example. Uh, this is for a group down in Bluegrass, Kentucky, uh, for a, uh, a really high, highly dense, highly dense um, uh, pavilion mall and, and civilian mall. They give us photographs of what the intersections might look like, and they wanted to come back to us. They wanted to ask us about what can we do for signage? Do we do a bridge? Do we do a center kiosk in the middle of a roundabout? Can we add that to it? Again, real quick sketches, uh, right the scale off of their photographs that they sent to us. Here's another plan view section of what my intersection might look like and what that signage might look like overhead in real time. Then down below, same thing again. Some sketches up here, uh, again, at same intersection, again, with the same same kind of salesmanship in the tower system itself, but a different look for this uh, bluegrass um, shopping pavilion area. Some other additional sketches here. This is the same thing, in essence. Um, the roadway, again, some, some signage and post work along the way to kind of flag you into the area. And last but not least, just some very simple streetscape work, adding a brick and color and some tone changes and sidewalk to like to the actual sketch itself. Oop, pardon me to get that out of the way there. And over here, interesting again, same thing again, um, for the city of Oregon, Ohio, we did a whole series of uh, lighting studies and then banner graphics, for example, just an ear's um, elevation, uh, some graphics on top of the banners and so forth, working with them on a lamppost design. They wanted a very antique look, so we went ahead and worked with the client to kind of work those through. And again, uh, some of the things, again, the final piece was getting in a really full detail piece here where the actual post itself, floral, signage, lighting, human scale, and then some brick and fencing detail. It all became part of the whole process of selling the whole operation here. So move along here. This is interesting. This is for an atrium piece uh, for a group down in the St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, they came to us with the idea of, we want to do a nice little walkway or a path to, uh, in the park, and but an atrium for like a resting place or a gathering place. So they gave us the actual drawings of what the, where the place would look like. Um, thank you very much. This is really cool stuff. 
um, how it all comes together, <clears throat> they gave us a site plan where the location was, but they didn't have an idea what it might look like. So my task was to go to put that into perspective and give them a series of sketches before we build up to the final rendering of this this uh, this little resting place or this uh, this gathering place for the park. This again goes back to the bluegrass system here, um, that um, that big uh, uh, trade center I was telling you about earlier. This they wanted some very unique signage, so we came back and said, All right, let's do some some uh, galvanized uh, aluminum and so forth, and put some graphics, illuminated graphics up on top. Here's a little perspective study down below, an elevation of what it might look like. Uh, again, this, they, they wanted a lot of height in this thing because they wanted to see it from a, from a real a strong, long distance. Again, another little sketch over here about this, the same kind of family of shapes. Um, this might be the entryway piece. This could be a little lower in area uh, to, to, to direct it to certain businesses and so forth. But again, notice a very common metal you look, metal look, brick base, very, very much architectural in nature here. And let's go back to this. Uh, here's some studies, for example, for... Um, um, let's see, where was this again? Oh, this was in, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. An entryway into, uh, into a subdivision, into a housing area. That's what that might look like. Here's a plan view where we come back in and you enter through here. Here's a little perspective of what that might look like as you're approaching it in your Ferrari. And uh, down below here, a little, a little concept sketch of what it might look like as far as putting together a roundabout and what it might look like in perspective once you approach this, this uh, subdivision. So, and then again over here, back to the same signage system again, it moves back and forth here, so forgive me, gang. I just want to go through this portfolio and let you know what might be coming here in the next few weeks uh, as far as sketch rendering goes. Same signage again for this, this whole bluegrass area. Notice very heavily high-powered lighting up on top. Again, this metal piece, uh, a little, little bit of a brick facade or core tent to, to work with it. And then down below, another little thumbnail sketch of the same principle, uh, high tower, a lot of lighting, and again, metal and uh, metal and uh, galvanized steel and so forth to put that all together. And a little perspective uh, study here of what it might look like. And here's some really interesting things. This is this is fun stuff. Getting some really graphic tone paper sketches about how powerful those sketches might look like under certain conditions. So I can move the robots a little bit more. There you go. Uh, that's kind of interesting how, wow, I thought that was a photograph. Uh, how cool this is in terms of of contact. This is done in indigo blue paper. Again, the same lighting or the same signage system, but giving a lot more personality. Again, notice, uh, Brad, this is good, hopefully geared to you. Notice how the, the tone of the sketches change from, from ballpoint pen to pencil. And as you get closer to final decision, we go to color and run more refinement and so forth. That's part of the process we're dealing with. And this one behind it here is a more of a night system where you've got these towers of light that come up and down the line again with the same big tower behind it with the signage. Interesting thing about this little facet here, when I did this uh, some years ago for uh, the group down in, uh, in uh, Kentucky, isn't it interesting that years later, the World Trade Center, which I was involved in doing some uh, conceptual design work on, used the same pillar of light, for example, to commemorate the 9-11 towers. Interesting stuff here, how it all comes together. Here's another series of sketches I think you'll enjoy. And these were, again, little battle planning thumbnail sketches of an overview perspective for the Bedford Auto Mall up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and there's a little thumbnail study. There's another view, another variation on the theme of the same thing. Pardon me as I move it up here. Another variation on the theme of that same process with all the banner flags of, of uh, different manufacturers in the mall itself. And we turn the page. Here's again, they came to us and said, well, we need a neat logo too. Isn't it funny how <clears throat> when you begin to work on a certain system, working with an awful lot of people, uh, not only do the landscape architecture or the architecture or the interior space, but you do the full package. And a lot of times my clients will come back and say, gee, can you give us a new logo? Or can you give us this idea? Because your, concept, your conceptual work is really strong. We need a new look here. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that's what this is all about. Bedford came to us and said, we need a new graphic logo for our business. These are just ballpoint pen sketches very quickly on what that new logo might look like. And when it's all said and done, coming into the sketch down below here, what it might look like with your, if you leave the, the dealership with the signage up on top, notice it's Maserati, um, for example, uh, Ferrari, um, and, and on and on and on. Let's go, sir. Um, with the auto mall area, there's a little elevation of the wall structure that tells you where to begin. And here's a building or a dealership behind it all. So you put the whole package together. That's what it's really interesting about putting this together. Here's another little study here down up on top. This is done for the University of Miami down in uh, Oxford, Ohio. Uh, a little over, overview bridge or an entry bridge over a certain uh, river that can come into the roundabout, enter into the campus. Another variation down below here on this sketch shows you another way to look at it. Um, putting these pillars in round, for example, or in the roundabout and these pillars of light 
That's what it looks like from the plan view, and then this bridge across or into the into the entry piece, the roundabout as you approach the campus. So you drive in all the way to, across the river and into the whole complex. And we go here. Thank you for your patience here. I hope this is making sense, gang. Here's a bunch of really fast um, plan view and perspective studies, studies for a small little shopping mall up in Oregon, Ohio. Um, again, plan view, a little bit of details of what the site might look like in a little perspective study. So there's one. There's a second variation on the same theme, how we all put it all together. And the third one over here, for example, a little bit of change of pace, a little bit of a little stepping stone or a little riser area into the shops themselves. And down below this last piece here, uh, a little bit of more of a hardscape look where the actual form changes and the building sits back behind that. So again, little, little, little small little space that can be very effective though with the right kind of uh, input and sketch format. And again, I want to stress, all of these sketches you're seeing um, so far is all the interface. And that's why I thought I'd stop today. Let me interject this thought for, for Chip and everybody else involved. That's why I thought I'd stop today and kind of move a little bit, um, pull back a little bit and say, what's coming are things like this. Where I want to go more with uh, each one of you, um, how, uh, it, how vital it is to work with a client and what your, what your skill base will help and direct you to. Um, these sketches are done one-on-one -on -one with clients. Now these are only, this is about a small percentage of the sketches I've generated. Uh, out of 24 portfolios like this I've got put together, just landscape alone. Um, but it's important to kind of pull back a little bit and let you see what's coming. I don't want to be labeled as just a car guy or a product guy. I want you to understand that there's more to it than just the actual product side of life. Um, there's an awful lot of need out there for good conceptual work in architecture and interior space and landscape work. So I want to open up the, the streams here to get into these the disciplines as time moves on, that's number one. Number two, to really telegraph you how important it is to work with clients. All these sketches are products of working with the teamwork of getting together with teams or individuals. Um, I got on, didn't know I actually had a conception that you were crazy. <laughs> yeah, I am a crazy car guy, uh, Brad, you're right. But I want to project to each one of you that there's more to it than just cars. I mean, I've been very fortunate over the last 20 some odd years, 30 years now, uh, pretty close to 38 years now. I'm working with a lot of different clients, automotive, product, landscape, graphic design, logo work. It's all over the place. And that's what I want you all to really begin to realize, that your skills are extremely powerful and needed in the marketplace. That's why I thought today, rather than going into any drawing, I want to show you what the client interface looks like when I'm working with individuals. And this is all, it, all these sketches are products of working with a client and listening very carefully what their goals are and then begin to deliver the goods. And I have not had a bad moment yet. Again, uh, this, this is interesting to go back here. These are the little the pen sketches. Then you turn around and you give them a little series of little thumbnail sketches. Let me pardon me here. But what they might look like in perspective. That's, there's a little shopping complex. Here's the intersection, its neighbor. And again, a little detail down below of what those sketches and what those park spaces look like. It's a small little area, but it really has a lot of impact in terms of parking, green space, sitting areas, and then retail. All part of the process. Something over here, here we go, this is interesting. A little watershed graphic here, um, not much. And sometimes we'll get requests from, um, and this is Mill Creek, for example, and uh, Kentucky. They came to us, they've got a series of, of, of control systems they wanna work with. How do you put that in a graphic format that makes sense? Well, it starts with education, starts with culture, economic value, health benefits, all this stuff is preconceived. And we work with our clients to kind of show them what our thoughts are. And that's really neat. When, when, you, when you take this stuff down to them, it really is a neat thing to watch happen. Uh, yeah, this, is, this tells our story, great. And they use this stuff for marketing systems when you go for funding and so forth. So let me turn the page here. Here again, some little thumbnail sketches on some entry pieces for Shad. Uh, again, the Shad was a development here in Delaware, Ohio, very expensive high-end housing. Just little ballpoint pen sketches. Again, elevation studies first. Nope, oh, pardon me, let me get these in the loop here. Elevation studies first, just to kind of put the character down. Then we come back in and do the same thing here. Um, up on top here, some little perspective and elevation studies to tell the story about what the whole process begins to look like. Again, telling your story is so important. It's not just do the sketch. I feel like sometimes perspective doesn't make sense, like on the market parking. Parking, it kind of feels off, but I can pin the point. Uh, you go back to this one, you mean? This parking spot here? 
Yeah, that, that's a bit of a distorted perspective, too. I've, I've really exaggerated the view there, Brad. So those things, it begins, it should be a little flatter, but I want to really flatter the fact that that, that, that island comes in into the parking area as we begin to pick up this piece. And it, it's just a really almost a, a bit more of an overhead perspective. So I kind of stretch a little bit of the parking space to, tell, to sell the idea that this is a much, to make it look like it's bigger than it really is. That's part of the trick as well. So let's go back over to this. Now, this is interesting too. The YMCA of America came to me and said, we need some new, we're doing a new piece in New Albany, a new building. And we're gonna to put together some interior stuff and some uh, uh, interior and exterior work. So this is what we've done here. These are, this is a little, these, these sketches are, are scaled down for very large pieces, almost 30 by 40 sketches. Here's the main desk area. Here are the exterior a little bit. Here's the interior, the primary desk or check-in area. And then uh, that was the, the, the first thing they'd see. This is a little, a little detail area of the gymnasium area, some of the workout area, for example, uh, some of the stations for lockers and the like, uh, glass atrium up on top, and then again, the gymnasium uh, for workout systems. This was, um, again, uh, one of the physical facility areas, um, for example, where you actually come in and uh, work out, for example, uh, same basic setup, uh, some digital board information, check-in area, and uh, some office equipment and detail work. Down below, this is a private office for one of the individuals or a lounge of some sort or a library we can come in to the YMCA and uh, just sit back and kind of take a look at uh, the digging into information. And this is a, a whole series of, of information here uh, for the YMCA group. Uh, this is a series of sketches, again, real fast pencil sketch again for YMCA that was part of that. This one relates back to this training one. This is just a pencil sketch of what the atrium might look like. So that started it. And that's where we ended up, so one of the areas. This is a balcony area that's happening up on top, up over here. Uh, can I ask, uh, how, how did you pop the, this, up, this one here? Is that the one you're after? On the wall in the gym. Oh, okay, let's go back here. On the gymnasium, this, this guy right here, Brad, is that your friend, this one? I did that with a, with a real interesting, real light blue marker and a little bit of pastel to kind of get a reflective quality. And again, same thing through here, a real light pale pale blue. And then over that, um, a nice uh, simple beige. Um, nope, I meant the um, one after. Um, whoops, that one. Oops, pardon me, let's get this in the field here. This guy here, oh, the reflection over here. Yeah, I got it. Very good. All I did there, I, I took the marker, based it in lightly, and then just brushed that marker across and put a little bit of pencil in there and some, some tempera. Same thing here. Took the same marker, passed it in. This is all glass up on top, so I reflected it back in, then dropped the marker right back over the top of that. Yep. One in the mirror. Yep. The one in the mirror. Yeah, does that help? Is that good? Also, the one on the mirror. Let's see what's on the mirror. Oh, this one right here? Yeah, super. Very good. Excellent. I, I hope that answered the question. Um, this is a little interior study uh, for, again, this, this started the pen sketch, then we went to the actual gymnasium part itself. This one is a new project here for a golf course. They wanted a very natural HVAC system inside the, the main um, um, lobby area of the golf course itself. So we came up with a fireplace, a little step up to it, and then this is, this is part of the HVAC duct that wanted to look like a tree, something very natural. Didn't know there was a tech. Yeah, technique. That's it. Um, and again, the ducting work came out of, the, out of the underneath the flooring system up into the actual tubing itself, and then provided heat within the golf course itself. Here are some very interesting little detail pieces here. Let me walk them through very quickly. These are all architectural finishes. Again, that piece we did earlier, we showed you Cyber City, Chicago. Um, again, um, Alouette Resort, Montreal, Canada. Some little uh, uh, housing areas there. This is a transit hub. Again, for the city of Chicago, this was done for Methodist Hospital. Oops, pardon me, as I moved out of the here. Methodist Hospital in Dublin. This was done for the Worley Building in Columbus, Ohio. This was done for the Imperial Hotel in Beijing, China. A little thumbnail sketch here. Red Roof Inns. And again, the Richard M. Ross Heart Hospital um, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So that's, again, another architectural study here. That's page one. This is some work we did for Scape Enterprises, uh, some, some freestanding kiosks and malls and so forth. Uh, that that was all part of the process there with. And this one is a family of sketches for a uh, move and pick restaurant in Samaritz, Switzerland. And this was done for uh, Fifth Third Bank in New York City. This one was done for uh, Damon's Restaurant in Dallas, Texas. And this one was done for Suburban Grill in San Francisco, California. 
But you can see with a lot of ranges here where this stuff comes in. And uh, let me stop there for a moment too again. Uh, I want you to know, I have not done a moment's worth of advertising. It's all come by word of mouth. Uh, I've been very fortunate to do some really cool stuff for a lot of great people. That's why I stopped today. to kind of put the brakes on this thing and let you see how you can become an influence with your skill set in a variety of different disciplines. It's not just cars, not just product, but it's everywhere. They need we they are well aware of great talent. You've got that. You can market that and become extremely successful. Let me turn the page here. The more of the stuff here. Same setup again. Let's get the sketch in place here. Uh, this is done for um, outdoor dining company in Columbus, Ohio. This is Hillsdale College in um, Lawrence, Indiana. This is done for uh, um, oh geez. Um, of the campus in um, a spiritual campus in um, in Oxford. This was done for Indiana uh, St. Pius uh, Church. This again was the entryway comp uh, copy serve um, her headquarters. Uh, Sorrento at Highland Lakes in Westerville, a little thumbnail study for entryway piece. This is done for a bridge in Winding Creek in Cincinnati, Ohio. And this last piece again was some more of the lighting things you saw in Oregon. Uh, that's it. So um, this is interesting too. This gets into a lot of individuals like builders and contractors to come to us and say, listen, we're going to develop an area or a big uh, new housing program. In this case, it was for uh, Hillsdale in Indiana. They wanted some some features of like a gathering place, entry walls and signage, looking at certain character along what the building might look like. A little, again, a study and elevation of what the height and the signage might look like, what the heights might be, four feet and 10 feet, little detail pieces that we can tell. Uh, the clients that they're working with to get it all put together. And go back to this one. Here's some really interesting little freehand uh, form sketches for um, uh, a uh, rest, not a restaurateur, but a clothier. I think it was uh, American Eagle looking at some very interesting new concept work for some neat looking uh, interior space studies. Oops, I'm gonna put this down. Probably just from there it is. This is what we're looking at as far as a basic overall form, very organic in, in area, a lofted area down below, uh, upper level of shopping. Here's another one that gets into some of the some of the things we're referring to. For example, this little sketch down below. Notice how organic it is, extremely organic. A ceiling system, um, product display, etc. Point of purchase displays, receptionist desks step up into certain retail areas there. And then again, this gets uh, some some concept work for um, um, a, a main, an, an Indian Lake in Indiana, for example, coming into the entry, there was a real severe slope they had to solve with a wall process. So we kind of teared it A, B, and C. In perspective, it looked like this, where it actually stepped up and brought you back into the area. Little, another little thumbnail sketch, thumbnail sketch down below of another variation of the same thing with the same wall system. And then coming down the line here, same thing with, again, the same, another, another way to look at this. Notice how I use contour to describe what those, what those shapes are doing for that uh, entryway in, in Hillsdale in Indiana. Very helpful, real fast sketches, but told the story. Now from these sketches, we went to the next phase of doing some graphic work and illustration work and finished it all up. Uh, again, another little variation on theme of how that wall might kind of fall back and notice how we use contour to tell what the story is. We just worked on that the other day. Have you ever did a product for a fictional area like the map down here in a video game and if you did not? Yeah, uh, I would do the same thing. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'm moving toward those things now, um, Brad. Yes, and I would use the same process all the way through it. Absolutely. Um, uh, like a fictional area might come to me, and I'll, they'll, they'll put me in an environment and say, "We need these kind of characters or this kind of personality." Absolutely, I put it all together like that. No problem whatsoever. Um, so if I did, um, if, I, if I did, how would you approach on a, a non-realistic environment? Same way. I just sit down and listen to the client begin to conceive certain things, take good notes. And then what I do most of all is very successful. I work right back and forth with the client itself. When I go to a meeting, I take a pad of paper with me and a big sketch pad, and they'll start talking and I'll start sketching. It's very interactive and it really solves a lot of problems. So that's how I do, if that comes my way, which I think next month there might be a couple that are coming my way, that's the approach I'm gonna take. So let me go move along here. And uh, this little thumbnail sketch here, uh, this, this Honda Homes of, of California came to us for a little thumbnail sketch of what a house of the future might look like. Um, oh, thank you. It, it's confidence in terms of um, a lot of years of experience, but my confidence is such, I wanna pass the same confidence on to you, Brad. That everything comes along, you use the same process. It just doesn't change. You begin to use your skill set to, to work with people and win their confidence by being truthful. And again, being powerful, and again, extremely lucid. You understand the key to it all is listening very well to their vision. It's not about you, it's about their vision. That's what I deliver. I'm going through this portfolio today for that very reason. 
to let you know that this this work is a product of, of working with great people, and I've really earned their confidence, and it's and I'm really I'm grateful for that. So I get a lot of work because of that. I'm never idle, so it, that's been fun. We get a little little uh, uh, elevation studies for some signage here, and again this is for the same process at India Lake, in uh, and. Uh, Indiana, and this was interesting. That housing thing again. Honda, Honda California came to us, and we did a whole son, a whole bunch of things, like some interior stuff, some product, uh, corporate work, some manufacturing work. Uh, it's really interesting. So all that came together. Question there again. Let's see. I'm a beginner, so it'll be a real long time until I get cut. Kind of, well, I don't think it'll take that much. So, Brad, the more you begin to work with it, the stronger it's going to get. And I'm, I'm convinced in time, you'll find that to be a real strong fulcrum to work on. So well, keep practicing at it and keep working with it, and that that confidence will build. And it doesn't take a lifetime. And I've been, I'm still working. I'm still learning like you are. I'm, I'm still ignorant as all get out when I begin to look at certain things. I've just been fortunate to make a lot of mistakes in life, but no one knows about it, <laughs> I hope. So be confident. Just keep working it. Like everything, you've got to keep at it. Absolutely correct. Now we move along here. Some little bridge, bridge studies, real, real quick little pencil sketches. This goes back to that, that program we had in West Virginia. Some, some elevation studies, working off of their engineering drawings. These are the sketches that were done. We have the same thing here, down below, maybe a different elevation on how to work with those trusses and how to build the bridge. A little, little thumbnail perspective about the towers and entry egress as you go across the highway. Here's another set of sketches where maybe another variation on the theme, it's a rounder roof it's just, as opposed to being sheer. And another variation down below where it actually goes much more truncated, very more organic and structural. So that's all part of the process as well. This is again, these studies were all done for that bridge at uh, West Virginia University. And then, last but not least, let's go back in again. Just a little bit of review. Here's some some more clean up processing here. This is done for the here a little thumbnail series. The sketches for hundreds were done for this hotel for the Imperial Hotel in Japan. That's part of the process. The Ross Hospital Red Roof Ends, and again that uh, program at uh, Lac du Air. In, um, in Quebec and Montreal and that part of the country. So that's what it, that's what it all comes down to, gang. And I just want to take a moment here, uh, pardon me for kind of going through the book like, like I did. I just want to make sure that these things got across today. And uh, we'll be spending some time the next few streams going back into some of this discipline. I hope, I hope this has been helpful to you. It's been helpful to me because I think for a period of time, you go from lesson to lesson and you start doing the same thing over and again. And I don't want to be labeled. Uh, when I go live, for example, on any given day, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I want to change the variation quite a bit. Someday I'll sketch. Uh, some days like, a day, like today. I really felt the need after yesterday's program to kind of pull back a little bit and let you see, see some of the professional work I've done in the landscape area and the architectural area. Because, again, it's different from product and it's different from automobile work. So that skill range is really, really critical. And I think that's the one thing I really want to get across here in the stream. So... Any questions in closing here? Anything uh, that you want to bring up, uh, Chip or, uh, or Brett? I hope this has been helpful for you. Well, I'm waiting too. What I will add is this. I mean, I've just gone through some things. How do you overcome the circle? Overcome the circle, ah, we good. I also pegged you as a car guy, but nah, wow. The circles are given. oh, the circles themselves, how to draw with them? Um, let me just let me put this aside here. Um, this this before I do that, Brad, let me just finish up this comment here, and then we'll get, we'll kind of address your your uh, situation about circles. Really interesting how again I'm really more concerned about making sure every time I go live in a stream that there's something that comes out of it for you as a benefit. I really really do want. To get into certain situations where you see how things are going. I mean, how to draw backwards or the curve line. Um, yeah, I'll show you that in a moment here. Um, but again, um, pulling back and let you see some of the professional work I've done, hopefully, will reinforce my credibility with you. And I'm not just out here uh, playing games with paper and pen and making a mess. I really want to make sure that this is all geared to client work and you can do the same thing with it. So I want to make sure my credibility was more than just, uh, as I said earlier, product and car and everything else we've been working on. So let me put this aside and grab a ballpoint pen here. I'm just going to walk you through a couple things here. Um, let's do this. Uh, I think I've got it. Yeah. When you work with circles, uh, and, and, and really, um, let me do this. Instead of, let's get some pencils here. Well, the first thing you need to work with here to get the circles correct here, Brad, is the following here. Take a minute and say, all right, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to pick up the face of a cube. 
There it is, and there it is. There's a face of a cube. Now what I want to do is, is develop a major axis and a minor axis. I want to come from there to there to there to there. Call those contact points. Now to get that circle ready, all set. Now we go back here into this and then just begin to spin that circle in that area. And there it is. That's how you begin to develop that. This now becomes my major axis, and that's my minor axis, back to VP. Look what happens here. If I go back in and do a series again, getting the face of that cube down, and finding its perspective center, and come back to the major axis, and the minor axis. Contact, 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 contact. Come back in again, and develop the circle. And over here, same thing again, in one point perspective. Perspective center, minor axis, major axis, reference, 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 and reference. There's a circle. But it all begins to work. You will see that, for example, if, I don't know, again, I don't want to be self serving here, but if you pick up my drawing program at drcontrast.com, you'll see that there's a whole lesson on circles and how to work with generated shapes like that. And I put a whole lesson plan together in that video program on Dr. Contrast on the Dream Labs for that very purpose. As far as curved lines go, not a problem. You come back in there with a vertical, in with a vertical. Come back in and begin to develop that shape. Come in there, and then come back up on top and change that. And then that begins to tell you how those curved lines work in a retail space, for example. You come out of that with a flat spot, come back out of that again, a little more curved rate, now you can notice just really practicing hanging all that stuff down. Curve up on top, curve line on the form here. Just, just again, practicing how to gesture a line here. Hi, Brad. I already picked up the program, but I was getting mushed by here. <laughs> well, I know it's really interesting how it all, I, mean, I think you'll find, though, Brad, when you go back into that program and see the, how those circles work, it makes a huge difference. Let's just do this. Let's do, let's, let's do this. Let's come back in and say, okay, I've got a first circle here. I'm going to come back in through here and put a circle here, curved lines. You know that works? No, no, not no, no. Don't don't be sorry for being inconsistent. I'm just glad you're on board. I hope this is. Do you see how that works? Here's why that works. Let me do this. Let me just show you something real quickly here. Let's go back to this this exercise right here. The face of a cube. Interesting. Here's how it all works. It goes like this. Watch what happens here. Face of a cube. Base of a cube. Perspective center. Minor axis. Major axis. Circle. That's how I plant the wheel. Again, base of a cube. Major axis. Minor axis. Generate the circle. That's how that works. Look how that begins, up, this whole, as you imagine this grid before drawing it. Um, no, you don't imagine it. It's actually a face, a cube, for example. Let's draw over the top of this stuff. If you have a cube that looks like this, and you draw through it, that's the cube itself. Now what you're doing, the grid is actually in, in bread in the actual cube itself. So you come back in through here, find the perspective center on this face, for example, and then go vertical. That's your major axis. Then go back to vanishing point, that's your minor axis. So that point, that point, that point, and that point set up the actual mechanics for doing a circle, which sits right inside that face. That makes sense? 
you can imagine the grid, but it's already built into the cube. I hope that makes sense to you there, I think, uh, Brad. I'm not sure if I answered your question there. <clears throat> in a sense, you do imagine it before you draw it. But it all builds around the face of a cube. Minor axis. The minor axis tells you, let's use that right here. The minor axis always goes back to, let's do this. The minor axis is a very strong guideline that takes you back. Let's put a, let's put a horizon line. Let's put a vanishing point out here. That major, that minor, that that ma minor axis goes right back to let's do this. That that's my minor axis right there. That guides me back to my vanishing point and also helps me set up that point, that point, that point, and that point, which helps me develop the circle. That makes sense. Absolutely. That minor axis goes right back to my vanishing point. If I if I build the other side of the cube and do this, this minor axis does the same thing. It goes right back to my vanishing point. There's my minor axis. Minor axis to the left, minor axis to the right. That makes sense? Excellent. That, that, well, this is helping. Very good, gang. There's a lot to it, as you well know, gang. It's not easy, and it's a lot of practice, a lot of work, but I'm confident you'll get there, Brad. Just keep working with it, and if you get a chance to keep looking at the lesson program, and we'll keep spinning along as we go here, gang. So excellent. And I'm glad you stayed on board here. I hope this has been helpful to you and Chip. Um, and uh, so the Cuban find this. Yeah, there it is. If, it's, yeah, you find the circle in it, Chip, you got it. So well well done here, gang. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna wrap things up here for the for the moment, for this, for this day. I just, again, I wanted to pull back and do a little bit of work on some of the professional portfolio work I've done for some of the clients in town here and around the country and overseas. And I'd let you see that it all begins to work uh, for the benefit of those who are all ready to begin to put you to work in terms of doing some cool stuff. So I really want to thank you for taking the time today, gang. If I've done something right, tell me. If I've done something wrong, please tell me. But above all else, I just want you to keep practicing. I want to thank you for tuning in here today. It's been a real joy to go, uh, please visit my website at drcontrast.com. And, and if you could, please pass along the word that I'm available on streaming here for those who might be interested in seeing how all this stuff begins to unfold. So we'll hope you see you sometime tomorrow, maybe at 1.30 or so. I might be in a bit of a situation because of a family matter uh, that might come up uh, throughout the course of the day here, but I'll keep you posted. If not for sure, uh, if not for sure tomorrow, uh, we'll be, be right back into it again on, uh, uh, for example, on uh, Tuesday with some little lesson work. So. Thanks very much, Doc, uh, and the Chip, and I, Brent, thanks very much. The next stream will be hopefully tomorrow at uh, 1.30. Um, and uh, let's see, probably uh, if not tomorrow because of a family matter, uh, I'll definitely pick it up again on Tuesday at 1.30 this coming Tuesday. So all the, all the best again, gang. Thanks so much for all that your time and effort here. Uh, take care of yourself, and uh, please pass the word along. I'm available here on Twitch, and we'll go from there. And I will sign up because I think it's really important to do this. Really, really interesting uh, all the time. Um, never forget to remember to dare to be great because you are. Thanks very much, gang. Take care and have a great day. All the best. Bye-bye.